Okay, for face protection standard is of course a fencing mask. Um, ideally, however, uh, something like Terry Tyndall's fantastic fencing helmet is far preferable. Uh, nice neck protection, a lot more solid for things like quarterstaff and, and longsword. Nice back of the head protection. Uh, these are really, really good option. You can also get specially made fencing helmets or modify a helmet yourself with some perforated grill, which is also probably better than a fencing mask for a lot of stuff. For body armor, it really depends on what you're using. For rapier, for shinai fighting, uh, I don't actually like wearing uh, very much at all. At the most, some very, very light padding on the body. This is really just a layer of felt covered in leather, even though it looks pretty. Um, just enough to take the sting out of a shinai. Um, a lot of the time uh, we fight with shinai without any body protection on at all. It retains some of the fear of the weapon and stops people treating them um, as, uh, as toys. So at the very most a little light padding. This is also perfectly adequate for something like uh, rapier or for fighting with things like the, the light Hanway back swords and pattern sabers and that kind of thing or the light bolognese swords you just need a little bit of padding on your body you can also use a full sleeve version of it um, this is just again a fairly lightly padded gambeson um, this one's got full sleeves and a bit of a neck uh, I personally prefer short sleeves or no sleeves and separate protection on the arms and elbows, which I'll show you in a sec. For heavier fighting with quarterstaff or with steel long swords or full weight steel swords, something a little bit more substantial is a good idea. This is my cartoon or Akaton, which is stuffed. It's actually quite solid. It's sewn into tubes and stuffed with, with cotton. Um, and this is, this is not too heavy and perfectly proof against pretty well any sort of weapon that we use. Okay, on the forearms, uh, we usually require a solid band brace, usually hardened leather like this, which can take a full cut and protect the arm from being hurt or broken. Um, and that's pretty well mandatory for all our weapons. We do a lot of attacks on forearms and having solid protection there rather than padding is important. Also, elbows are pretty vulnerable. Being hit on the elbow is very unpleasant. So either a, a simple plastic skateboard type thing um, is actually fairly effective for elbow padding, or you can go for a period cops like that out of steel, which is obviously better. Um, but either of these are, are, are good protection and it's something that we also uh, pretty well insist on for every weapon. If your hand isn't protected by a basket hilt, um, obviously they're very vulnerable. Um, particularly with long swords, they can be crushed and broken pretty easily. If you look at my finger, that was broken with a feather sword through the lacrosse gloves a couple of weeks ago. Hurt. Um, for things like shinai, padded gloves are just fine. Uh, this is just a modified bag glove, which did sterling work for many, many years. Um, and it's got enough padding to protect your hands from uh, shinai strikes, even with the two-handed shinai strike, and even the rattan starves. These sorts of things are fine. Uh, the lacrosse gloves, uh, and hockey gloves, and cricket gloves um, offer similar levels of protection. Um, the fingers are still a little bit vulnerable, and they will still sting, but these aren't bad, at least for shinai and rattan fighting. However, for steel fighting, they are inadequate. So some sort of solid gauntlet is far preferable. Uh, these ones, from Lockdown, these are Kydex hardened plastic gauntlets, which I've just got, which I really like. And these offer good solid protection for the hands and particularly the fingers and the thumb. And these are adequate for steel bouting. Um, probably, although I haven't, been struck on the hands doing it yet, probably even for the full weight steel long swords. They're very protective and I'm very pleased with these, but again, any sort of heavy grade steel mitten gauntlet is going to 
be the best option for steel bouting, for protecting your hands, particularly for longsword. Uh, that said, anybody who thinks anything in the world that will protect you from a full-blown cut with one of these to your hands is kidding themselves, okay? An immense amount of power can be put into a full weight steel longsword. Uh, so another option that's worth exploring is actually doing things to the hilt. This is a slightly modified 17th century Scottish clam guard, which actually offers an awful lot of protection to the hands itself. So with gauntlets on underneath that, that's pretty well as protected as you can get. It does get in the way if you want to do fancy German things. Um, for our system of longsword, it's not so important. So this is another option, is actually looking at modifying the hilts of your longswords in order to add protection rather than relying simply on gloves and gauntlets. Uh. Finally, leg protection. Uh, a lot of people sort of ignore this. Uh, very simple solution, we found our cricket pads. Uh, these are, are really nice, strong, flexible. They come up above the knee and protect that upper thigh area as well and can withstand very heavy blows with swords, certainly as heavy as you're gonna to get to the leg. Easily available, cheap, very effective. Uh, you can cover them with leather in order to make them look a little less crickety if that bothers you. It also helps protect the face of them. If you get vinyl covered cricket pads, the vinyl does split under sword blows, so the older canvas covered ones are better and even better if you reinforce them with a bit of leather like so. Now the way these are made, you will notice with that hard stuffing inside sewn tubes is essentially the same as the medieval armour. This is like a full body cricket pad and it's really, really good protection. Uh, so that's pretty well the safety gear that we use at Stakata.